Hello there everybody, it's Sally Cathcart here again from the Curious Piano Teachers and welcome to the second video in our Sparkle series and Sparkle stands for S for Sing which hopefully you've watched already, P for Patterns, A for Automatic, R for Rote, K for Knowledge, L for Landmark and E for Enjoy and today we're going to be looking at P for Patterns. And in this video, we're going to cover why a phrase is really the most basic musical unit we should be using to introduce notation, how our brain loves to chunk pieces of information for easy access and retrieval, and how learning to play patterns can then lead really easily to learning to read patterns. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you'll know what an important part patterns play in music playing and reading. So let's get going. I want to start by taking a look at why a phrase is the most basic mu musical unit we should use to introduce notation. If I just say a, uh, it's pretty meaningless. It needs connecting to another word, doesn't it? Like a dog, a cat, for example. And it's just the same with single notes. Musically, they're quite meaningless. If I just go, oh, it's just like saying, oh. All notes are understood easier if they are exist in a musical relationship. So if I go, oh, now that's better because those two notes immediately have that relationship. Together, they make a significant musical gesture. Together, they make a phrase and I can be expressive with it. No, no. Now within a phrase, notes and rhythms form patterns and shapes that as expert readers, you and I, we understand and recognize these patterns and we can reproduce them with very little conscious effort, both orally and physically. So for example, our fingers can feel their way. They've learned over, over much, much, many hours of practice to feel their way through a myriad of musical shapes and patterns. Let's look, for example, at Mary Had a Little Lamb. Here it is behind me. We, in this very simple song, we've got all sorts of patterns going on. We've got rhythmical patterns. Just look at the number of times this rhythm is repeated or look at the number of times that rhythm is repeated. We've got melodic patterns, stepping down the same, stepping up. We've also got the structural pattern of the phrases and if we want to dig deeper, there are also harmonic patterns. And not only do we see them, you and I, but we are also able to hear them and we feel them in our fingers. You can feel Mary had a little lamb in our fingers. So patterns are pretty important when playing and reading music. Next up is how our brains love to chunk individual pieces of information into larger segments for easy access and retrieval. And to show you this and to highlight it, we're going to play a little game. So I'm going to show you a word and there are two letters on each of the sheets. And I want you to keep those two words in uh, two, two letters in your head as I show you the others. And you're going to try and build up what the word is. OK, so here is the first one. And then followed by and finally, OK, did you manage to get it? So let's put it up on the board and let's see if we can work it out. I'm going to start up here because I think it's the only way I can manage to get it all visible. And as soon as we start to string those individual words together, oh, let's get them the right way upside, then it begins to make a lot more sense. Curiosity. I expect you got it, but instantly we can see it, can't we? See them all together and there is it is there is meaning straight away. And music is full of patterns that as experts we have learnt to just instantly recognise. Of course, our young pupils, though, don't have any of that experience. And just like a teacher at school teaching pupils to read over a considerable and extended period of time, it is our job as piano teachers to build this experience. So rather than just teaching a crotchet equals one beat in isolation like that, it's far easier for our young pupils 
to understand and to be able to clap a rhythm and know its relationship of one to another if we show them a pattern of rhythm, a pattern of crotchets. And even we can add in, for example, it becomes even more meaningful possibly if we then have some quavers. So these are quarter notes and eighth notes, crotchets and quavers. So finally today, let's look at how learning to play patterns helps to learning to read patterns. Now, I've been talking quite a bit about us as experts, that we have patterns in our fingers as well as in our eyes and in our ears. And I want you to think for a little bit about your pupils, because I think a lot of children learn the piano mostly through their fingers. Let's take the example of an elementary, a grade one pupil who's learning a new piece. To be honest, the pupil reading is still a struggle at that age, and the pupil wants to get away from the cognitive effort of reading all those notes as quickly as possible. And what they do is they memorise the piece through their fingers. And which is why that they will then have difficulty in starting this very familiar, probably, piece of music in different places. They'll only be able to go from the start or from a certain point. It's just because their fingers will have learnt the pattern um, because that's where they've memorised. And just to be clear on this, I'm not really talking about that today. What I'm meaning by learning to play the patterns, helping to learn to read the patterns, what I'm talking about is a deliberate and organised physical pattern development that, again, as teachers, we need to be putting in. And this can happen before reading notation and then alongside reading notation, but not introduced at exactly the same time. The problem of introducing notation alongside the pattern reading is that it leads to brain overload, to be quite honest, and it can cause considerable physical tensions in, in the body to develop. But as teachers, we can pre-frame the whole reading experience by getting some common pianistic patterns into their fingers. I mean, for example, a major and minor pentachord starting on different notes. You know, that can start on G, it can start on D and have the black notes already going in there. Great. Different intervals as well, or triads in the, all the different inversions. And by pre-framing the pattern reading, by putting the patterns in the fingers, what this means is that the pupils are able to focus on playing their patterns in really healthy ways. And with help from you as the teacher, there is then an easy and seamless progression to reading and playing the same patterns. So just to wrap up today's video, what we've covered is how a phrase is the most basic musical unit we should be using to teach notation. Um, how our brains love to chunk individual pieces of information into larger units, and that's really what we've got to work with. And how learning to play common patterns helps to learn later to read those same patterns. So now you know what an important part patterns play in music playing and reading. We've created a great workbook to help you get really clear about all the different principles in our Sparkle series. So do feel free to download that and work through it. And I'd love you to join me in the next video where I'll be discussing A for Automatic. My name is Sally Cathcart from the Curious Piano Teachers. Bye for now.